eat bold with Subway Fiery Footlong Subs. So hot they'll burn the wimp right out of you. Try the new Turkey Jalapeno Melt, a fiery twist on a legendary flavor, and the bold, delicious buffalo chicken, backed by popular demand. Subway, eat fresh. The BS Report is a free-flowing conversation that occasionally touches on mature subjects. First of all, this is the BS Report with Bill Simmons. It might be cool, I don't know. And if it's not, I don't care. The BS Report with Bill Simmons. Bill Simmons works for ESPN. He's also named the sports guy, and he writes a comical sports column. He must be a popular dude. The BS Report. It's got a real dirty sound. Like a rusty steak knife cutting through a well-aged steak. No. 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 Here's Bill Simmons. Welcome to the BS Report. Another sunny day here in Southern California. Before we get to our guests, you should sign up for Pigskin Pickup on uh, ESPN.com. Our group is SportsGuy33. That's the BS Report Twitter group. And uh, if you win it, there's going to be some good prizes. I will announce the prizes after we see how many entries we get. Joe Mead, are you excited for that? I'm thoroughly excited. Okay, good. One I guy didn't even who, have to set it up. So One guy who will be in this group, is, and we haven't heard from him for like seven, eight months, and now he's back in the Subway Fresh Take Hotline. Our old friend, Cousin Sal, what's happening? Yeah, I am back, baby. We missed you. I get a lot of emails <laughs> really about you. Psyched. People don't I understand. That. I wish I could talk about anything other than football with you. I'd call in more, but uh, I, you're always. I always invite you, and it's like you're a bear. Once the season ends, you go into hibernation. Well, I like to stay focused, but uh, the other truth of the matter is, I'm a simpleton, so I only really know football. But yeah. Well, two weeks, less than two weeks. Yeah. Getting there. I, I recommend everyone put in their two weeks' notice at, at work because this is uh, this is it. This could be football. This could be the end of football for a while. So. I am now like really excited for football because it was so distracting, so much sports going on this year that you really couldn't get into the groove until a couple weeks ago. I watched the entire Pats Rams preseason game last night. The Pats defense <laughs> looks terrible, by the way. Oh my God! Do not take the Pats defense in fantasy. <laughs> maybe if their new tight end could play safety or something, uh, then maybe things would go differently for you. I I have not been this excited about a Patriot player in a long time. Rob Gronkowski. Our young tight end. They gave him Ben Coates' his old number. Uh, he just looks like a stud. I'm excited for his real life potential. I'm excited for his Madden potential. Just a, a lot to like here. And he has a good nickname, I, the Gronk. That should be good. Well, let's let's hit the over unders, and we could cover everything we need to cover as we're doing. Um, let's do the over unders first, and then we'll do the divisions after. What we're gonna do? We're we're gonna go through uh, Vegas. What they do is. For every team, they give an over-under. You can bet on, um, like, for instance, Arizona, seven and a half wins. So you can bet they will finish with more than seven and a half wins or less. So what Cousin Sal and I are going to do, we're going to go through every team and give our take and maybe try to hone in on three bets that we like. So we'll just do it in alphabetical order. I'm getting these off oh sports. Oh, my God. People are going to be miserably bored by, by this. No, nah, this is great. People are so yeah. excited. They're driving right now to some weird uh, beach location, and, they, and they're on the edge of their driver's seat. Uh, Arizona Cardinals, the over-under is 7.5, and, and the action has been on the over. Uh, the under right now is plus 120. That seems, it seems like they're going to suck, right? I think they're going to suck. I think they're, they're the least improved, or uh, however you want to put it, in, 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 in a horrible division, by the way. Maybe the worst division in sports. Yep. Seven and a half. Uh, God, I wish it were eight, because I would go on there. But seven and a half is right, right, good enough to make you think on that. Uh, I, I would still go on there, I think. I would still go under two, so we're going to say under for that one. And you know what? At the end of the year, we'll have to compare how we did with what okay. actually happens. Atlanta. They lost Dansby, Roll, Warner, Bolden. It's like their best guy at every position, except you know Bolden. But he compliment. You know, Fitzgerald will get double covered now. It's uh, they're in trouble, I think. Yeah, and the other thing is, you know, I, we saw in Philly like McNabb to Kevin Cobb might really not be much of a difference because I think Cobb's going to be good. In this case, going from what Warner gave them the last couple of years to the Matt Leiner, Derek Anderson combo, that really might be worth four to five wins the other way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Atlanta okay. Falcons getting a lot of buzz as a potential breakthrough team this year. Their over-under is nine, and how Vegas does this, if there's action on one side or the other, they have to shift the line, and the action 
has been toward the over. They are now minus 170 if you want to bet the over on that. I still like it. You like the over? I mean, I wouldn't bet it, but if I had to choose, I'd go over nine for that one. I would stay away, but I would, I'll would i take the under in there. I, I like the plus 145. I think this team was like 28th in the league against the pass. It really did. I know they got Dunt to Robinson, but the guy's name is Dunter for God's sakes. That's not their answer. I, you don't like I, I that go name? under nine. Joe Mead, will you keep track of this? I'll try. Can I get you to do some work this hour? <laughs> I don't know. Sure. I'm pretty busy. So okay. we disagree. We disagree on Atlanta so far. By the way, wait till he gets the but we get the Buffalo. He's really not going. He's not going to be happy. Yeah, well, we're almost we'll there. Stop, we'll stop keeping track right around there. One of the biggest bandwagon teams, the Baltimore Ravens. Their over under is ten. A little more action on the over than the under. Everybody l- likes them to either make the conference title game or, or the Super Bowl. Where do you stand? You know what? I don't, I don't love them necessarily, but if you go like process of elimination, I think they're going to win that division. Yeah. I hate to say it, but all right, the Steelers I think are done. They're looking at two and four or three and three in those first six games, and uh, the Bengals we know, you and I both know they were, they, they were like terrible. they went three and five down the stretch, awful against the Jets, and like they found a formula to win the game, a game and run the ball. Now they bring in. Uh, T.O., it's going to be bad news. And the, and the Browns are awful with DeLome. I like the Ravens, and I like them over. So you don't like Pittsburgh. You you're not. You don't think they can hold the four for four games, and then the rejuvenated, uh, more female-friendly Ben Roethlisberger might, uh, might, might push them another level. You're not buying that. I'm not buying it. I, I know Palomalo was out last year, but they... They look horrible at times with, with Big Ben, and uh, their offense was, uh, was not exactly clicking. I'm, I don't know. I'm going Ravens. I think uh, Bolden's big. I, so they have a target to throw to. I think they win over 10 games. I think they're going to hit 10 exactly, but I'll join you on the over for that one because I don't want to disagree. The Bills, this is kind of sad. The Bills over-under is 5.5, and, a, half, and uh, a lot of action on the over, plus 145. Um... That means if you like the under, you got to lay 170 to win 100. Hey, it's almost a stay away. At gunpoint, I think I'd go under, though. Oh, I ha- you have to go under here. If you like the AFC East at all, and I, I think it, it's one of the two best divisions, you, you can't like the Bills. I'm sorry, Joe Mead. I'm sorry. I know he just threw his pen down. But uh, Chan Gailey, Toronto, three quarterbacks that suck, and they're just now transitioning to a 3-4 defense, I like the under here. I really do. Too many running backs. Joe Mead, how do you feel? I put everything I own on the under. Wow. <laughs> yeah, they're going for 0-16. Jake it's Locker, I'm telling you. They'll beat the Pats once. No, they they'll won't. Sc- they'll put up 38 points on the Pats, and that'll be their one win. All right, we agree on that. The Bills, I, the minus 170 is a little frightening, though. Five and a half is so many wins for that team. That is a lot of wins. All right, well, let, I'm going to write this down as a possible bet for us. Okay. Minus 170. Okay. Uh, Carolina, seven and a half is the over. More action on the under than the over. I have no feel for that team. But John Fox, got to trust the infrastructure with him a little bit. I'm, I'd have to lean toward over on them. Wait, hold on. I'm, sure I'm getting a, uh, interrupted here. Buddy, I'm on the phone. What happened? Uh-oh, a kid interruption. Fantastic. Go play with it for like 45 minutes. I know. I'm doing over-unders. All right. Joe, let's keep that. That was that was a good father son moment. That was really good parenting there. Yeah. <laughs> Hit him with a newspaper. You know, you try so. to tell a kid you're going to be doing over unders and uh, on the phone, but they they just don't care. He should know. He's five now. He should understand how important this is. Yeah, uh, Carolina <laughs> yeah, Panthers. Yeah, I mean, are they eight and eight? Maybe. I think eight. I don't love this. I don't love this, but I would go slightly over. Yeah, I don't let's, know. Blossoms in there by week six or, or what? But. Um, Certainly not a bet you want to make either way. Uh, and they have defensive line problems. Like this is why no one's going to beat the Saints in that division because there's no pass rush from any of these teams. And uh, you know, and they lost uh, and they lost Julius Peppers anyway. Mm. Well, <laughs> speaking Slightly of Julius, eight and eight. Julius now in the Bears. Yep. Their over under is eight wins exactly. Uh, more action on the under. You have to bet one forty five to win a hundred than the over on them. And. I don't know. Eight and eight feels right. Almost that's a stay away to me. What do you think? Yeah, I would stay away. Do we have to pick? We do we have to pick on this? We can pick them to go exactly eight and eight. Yeah. All right. I'll I'll go eight and eight. 
All right, let's go. I let's love this Mike March thing. What am I missing? His last three teams were disastrous. <laughs> I know. Can't see the game passing by already. Let's go. Let's go under just so we're on the record. All right, yeah. Yeah, maybe they'll go 7 9. The Bengals, also an over under of 8, and a lot of action on the over, which is now minus 150. And I got to say, I. I, I can't shake the part where I'm not sure Carson Palmer is good. Yeah. Why Why is everybody considering him to be the 2006 Carson Palmer? I don't care who their receivers are. He can't. He's not accurate anymore. No, well, you know what? I, I do care who their receivers are. And like I said earlier, they found a winning formula with running the ball. And now he's going to be a, uh, a head case worried about if T.O. and and Ocho Cinco are, are going to get enough uh, targets there. I, that's a mess, I think. I, I would go slightly under. I'd say seven. All right. Let, and let's add them to our list of possible bets, because I, I think Pittsburgh is going to be better than you do, and I, I think that could be a tough division for them. Right. Cleveland. Way, over under 2015, the year 2015, Ocho Cinco actually tweets during a touchdown. Like He has like a breakaway 40-yard touchdown pulls out his phone at the 15 and at least pretends to uh, start texting. I would say the over-under is week nine. Really? This yeah, this year. Yeah, why not? <laughs> I think he would become my favorite player if he did that. How would he do it? He'd have to put his cell phone, like, he'd have to hide it in inside yeah. the dirt in the goalpost and then pull it out and tweet oh, it? Oh, the goalpost. No, 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 no. This is the, during the play. He's got to he's break <laughs> both away from the defender. <laughs> He's at the 40. He's got it in his, uh, I don't know, like a utility belt, like Batman. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, he'd figure something out. That would win an SB. Yeah. Cleveland, yeah. over under five and a half, and for some reason more action on the over than the under. I, yeah. I just, uh, I, I have them five and 11 or worse every year until they show me differently. Well, hey, Nick? what, Jake DeLome? That's not the answer for you? No, it's not. It's not even <laughs> a hint of an answer. No, I know. And believe me, I look for teams to come out of nowhere and, and, and do something, but that, that, it can't be them. It can't be them, right? I'll go, what is it, five and a half, you said? Who's their coach? I can't remember. I'm drawing a blank for some reason. Was it? Mangini, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm going under. <laughs> thing is, they won their last four with them last year. That, that is surprising, right? Ooh. Won their last four games. So you're saying they won their last four, and now the veteran calming influence of one Jake DeLome could, uh, could... The thing is, I think you have to factor in the decision in LeBron into this whole thing. It's been such a body blow for Cleveland sports. Oh, and the yeah. Indians, and it's just the worst sports here ever. The Browns have to suck. Yeah. They have to tie into the Carlos Santana injury and LeBron and the Cavs meltdown. It's the, right. it's the logical last act for them to go like 3-13 and 13 again. I'm going to say I'd under. Say after again. They're under, and I think uh, uh, soon enough their fans won't care if they move again. All right. Yeah, uh, should we save Dallas for later, or you want to bang them out now? Uh, let's do them now. Then let, me, let me do my complaining now. All right, well, the I over went to a training camp the other day to see them play. Oh, let's, let's hear it. Well, you know, I don't want to sound like a frustrated uh, athlete, like an old father when I used to play the game, but these practices are, are nothing. I'm sorry. They really are. They're just basically walkthroughs. They're not wearing pads on the bottom, so there's no tackling, obviously. And, like, uh, you know, I love my team, but it's the practice. this is their only practice of the day, by the way. I think there's two days a week where they have one practice. And uh, it's supposed to go from 2 to 4. The first team rolls out around 2.30, stretch it to 250, and then they just, like, they go through simulated plays for 45 minutes and uh, and then do, like, five sprints, and it's over. And I, it makes me hate Brett Favre more. But <laughs> it really does. Like, what is this prima donna crying about? This is, this is fun out there. They're all smiling out there. But anyway, that has nothing to do with the cow. I have practice. a question. I have a question for you. Every year that you've gone to the training camp in Oxnard, you you come away saying you're never going to go again, and then a year later you go again. I know, I know. Well, they keep giving me the press pass. I'll do oh. something dumb. I'll, I'll run naked one year, and that'll be the end of that. It's like it's but, always 107 degrees. Nothing no, ever happens. No. no. In fact, I picked Cleto up in the valley, uh, Jimmy Kimmel Live band leader. It was 106 in the valley. We drove 45 minutes to Oxnard. It was 65 degrees. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, really cool there. Really cool. Who knew? Oxnard. Uh, I'm going under for the Cowboys. All right. 
I think that's smart because listen to this, and it's not complaining. These are their road games at Minnesota, at Green Bay, at Indy, at Houston, at Arizona Christmas Day, plus all the division at Philly Giants and Redskins. Mm. That's rough. I don't know what we did to deserve that. We got blown out in Minnesota in the whatever championship, not even a championship game. But So wait, hold on, I wait a second. So you got those six NFC East games are all like playoff games basically because right. that's the best division by far this year. And then you also have Indy. Who are the other ones? The these, are, these are road games. These are all road games. Yeah. At Minnesota, at Green Bay, at Indy, at Houston, and at Arizona on Christmas, which who knows who's going to win that. You know? That's brutal. I'm going that's under for that. Nine and seven, I'm, I'm hoping. I'm yeah, hoping. that's not good. That's not fair. Sometimes that just happens. Denver. Well, wait till we get to your division. Talk about not fair. But Denver is, uh, is seven, and there's been no action either way. Oh, boy. And they feel that's like a fun. seven and nine team. It's smart to take to stay away from there. I think. Well, on the record, we're going to have to go under, right? Because they they already yeah. lost Doomerville and they've got nine quarterbacks. And... Well, you got Kyle Orton, your quarterback. You can't downgrade at receiver. You know, like Roy right. and Gaffney are not going to do it. And Marina, I just don't know where they get their their points from this year. It's so, uh, nowhere. Uh, Feel it from the field goal kicker. Detroit, yeah. they're over as five. And there's been a surprising amount of action on the over. It's minus 145 for them. And, I, you know, if doing the sleeper formula of the, the out-of-nowhere team that sucked last year and nobody's talking about them and all of a sudden, whatever, and they're 3-1 and one and everybody gets excited, they, they are on the list, I think. I think they ex- have to be considered for the out-of-nowhere sleeper. I'm not saying it'll happen, but no. I think five seems low for them. Uh, really? I think it's high because... They won two games last year, and the Packers and, and and Vikings are still very strong, and people seem to like the Bears, too. So why should they more than double their win total? Like, I think if they got to five, that would be, that'd be a major accomplishment for them. I like I like the uh, the Schwartz era. I like the second year from Stafford. They've, had, they've been drafting now without Matt Millen for two years. That's a bonus. Yeah, I guess um, that does help. I don't think the Vikings are going to be very good. Really? Yeah, I think uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't like the makeup of that that team and some of the stuff that had happened. I'm going to go. So let's disagree on this. I'm going to go. All right, I'll go under. under. I, right. I think it's probably around five, but I'll I'll go under there. Packers is ten. Um, not a lot of action either way, and ten feels about right for them. Um, you, you, we can't stay away, so you want to go over or under. I, I love I love this over. This is one of my four best, I think. Really? I, I maybe I'm, you know I don't usually get sucked in by the preseason, but well, what's the opposite of getting hustled? I mean, they're, they're really they are going crazy, and uh, and the best receiver Jennings didn't even play yesterday. I just think they score a ton of points. I think they're annoyed. I think this. Uh, you know, we happen to know a story or two about Aaron Rodgers, and I, I, he takes this Brett Favre thing more personally than people think. And uh, and I think the Packers are real strong, 11 or 12 wins this year. That's true. We do know a story or two about Aaron Rodgers. Yep. And he does take the Brett Favre stuff personally. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to join you. You convinced me in the span of 20 right. seconds. Yeah, over. All right, well, be, uh, and also because I don't think anybody else in that division is going to be very good. And, no. uh and especially if Minnesota starts out slow, and if anything happens to Favre, and uh, and you're right, they looked fantastic last night. They really did. I tried to get in a bet with you with the Packers in the over in the third quarter. I was hoping you were asleep, but uh, it, was, it was a little earlier in the third quarter. I probably would have figured uh, would, would have taken it. The Texans, their over under is eight, and there's been a ton of action on the over. Now every year, team people try to talk us into Houston and San Francisco as the sleepers. This has become a new August check. tradition. Well, I'm not buying One of those teams make the playoffs already one of these years, so we can yeah. just be done with this. I'm going to go. I, I'm going to use the same philosophy I used earlier. Until Houston wins nine or ten games, I'm just going to keep picking them to win eight or less. So I'm going to go under. Well, what is it? Is it eight? Well, I'm sorry. It's, I missed it. it's exactly eight. Yeah, eight and eight. Oh, man. Which they'll probably go eight and eight. That's about right, I think. The uh, problem is they... You know, everybody loved this Ben Tate, and he was looming as a as a huge fantasy sleeper this year. And you know, and then he breaks his ankle, and they're right back to where they were with the 19 running backs and who's going to play. And you know, it's I, I don't feel like they've improved. 
You know what? I don't either, but I'm going to I don't know why, but I'm going to go over. I just too many too much oh man, but they have no running game either. What is it? Arian Foster? No, you said it. Don't back out. I'm typing All right, it. I'm going over. All right. I'm going over with it. I don't see how they do it. Though. Dunta Robinson, he's gone. That that was their hot corner, and he's gone. Uh, let's let's. I'll stay with over. Well, in that same division, Indy, the over is 11, the under is 11, and uh, there's been more action on the under than the over. The over is actually plus 105. I still like it. Let's see this team not go 12 and 4 one year before we say they're going to go under. I agree, but don't you think it should be based on 15 weeks? <laughs> like it's sort of not fair if you take the over and they they have 11 wins going into week 16 and they start, you know, you have to factor all that. Oh, that's a good point. Who could potentially challenge them in the last three weeks? Yeah. The division is Houston, Jacksonville, and who's the fourth team? I'm drawing a blank. Tennessee, right? Tennessee. So we need Tennessee to stay within two wins of them, basically, for that. Their last three games are Jacksonville, at Oakland, and Tennessee. Uh, I mean, uh, I can't go under on that. I mean, it, no, it, you, can't. You, you can't pick them to go 10 and 6. That's not going to happen. They, they kill everybody. And, uh, I mean, they, they, they probably have their deepest receiving cord. Ever this year. Right? Yeah, I like them. I, I, I mean, I, they're on the short list for me. There's four or five yeah. teams that I think are, are just separate from everybody else this year, and they're one. Jacksonville cool. is seven, and plus 120 for them to go over. I, I just don't see it. I, they seem like another crap season for them. I wouldn't go over with that. I think it's probably seven is right, but it definitely wouldn't go over, so I guess we have to, have, we have to take the under. Yeah, I'd take the under. We'll probably push that one. I mean, this will be four years that they've uh, they've gone uh, under 500 if they do it four in a row. Yeah. And I don't have talent on that team. Trouble. So, here's one that I really like. The Kansas City Chiefs, over or under six and a half. <laughs> Minus 120 to win 100. I love the over. Talk me out of it. Well, all right. Here's, 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 I'll talk you out of it. There, and Joe Mead will uh, back me up here. Their offensive coordinator is Charlie Weiss. Their defensive coordinator is Romeo Cornell. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> what do you mean? You talked me into uh, it. <laughs> Getting the band back together. You love it. You love it. I, I just I, they think didn't that's get any th- offensive line help for for uh, Castle. And um, it's a terrible what's division. The number? Six and a half. It's an awful division. They've been rebuilding for three years. At some point, it's going to come together. The Kansas City needs and it needs any ray of hope. They got the easiest schedule in the league, I think. Um, Castle's not bad. I watched them do it two years ago. Yeah, they got. All right, I'll go over with you. But Thanks, I don't like. Man. I mean, they drafted like a punt returner. They don't have any offensive line up. Uh, I'll go over. Thanks, buddy. Seven wins. All right. I like them for the division too, but we'll get to that. Miami's eight and a half. They just—it's a clear over to me. Hey, between because okay. I don't think the Pats are going to be as—you know—I think the Pats are a nine and seven team, and the Bills are going to be terrible. And uh, Miami just seems like a good, smart playoff type team to me. All right, here's the thing. I like Miami, but here's here's my thing with the scheduling, and you can look this up. The Jets and Patriots, who are the division, who, who were the playoff representatives for uh, for uh, that division are home against Minnesota, Green Bay, Cincinnati, and Baltimore, also the four playoff teams. Mm. The Dolphins are away against all four of those teams. Really? That's craziness. That's, I mean, not that Cincinnati is uh, gangbusters, but I don't like it. And week two through nine for Miami, at Minnesota, the Jets, New England, at Green Bay, Pittsburgh, at Cincinnati, at Baltimore. So you have like to do the a under. lot of work to get uh, to get eight wins. You like the the I'm under. Going under? I'll say this: I think the biggest game in their season is going to be Week Two in Minnesota because they can steal that game. No Sidney Rice, Favre with the ankle. I think Minnesota is going to lose in Week One. There's a lot of pressure. Fans are going to get nervous if they fall behind. If Miami can take that game, I think they're off. Well, they're off and yeah. running. I think they're going to have to. I, I'll I'll stay under them. Which brings us to the Vikings. They're over under nine and a half, and uh, and there's been some action minus one thirty on that. And man, it's tough to it's tough to imagine them not going ten and six, even if I don't like them. What do you think? 
Well, I, th- this is the team I hate most, and I think I'm going under only because I don't want it to work out for uh, Brett Favre. But I can't see them. I mean, they're, they're a couple migraines away from, uh, from being like an 8-8 eight and eight team, I think. I think, they're, I think they win nine games. I'm going under as well, and uh, and if this Harvin thing doesn't shake out, it's I think Brett Favre is going to find out that this season is a lot different than the last season. Um, everything went right last season. Everybody was healthy, perfect schedule. Everything was indoors. Um, this season feels like it, it's headed in a different direction. I'm going under but, as well. Let me tell you something. Here's the caveat. It, nothing will be worse if those top receivers go down, and Brett Favre, like he's done in the past, makes no-name receivers look good. He'll bring Javon Walker back to life and Greg Camarillo or whoever. That was terrible. I don't think Javon Walker can come back to life. Uh, my New England Patriots, the over is nine and a half. A lot of action on the over. Minus 145 to win 100. And you know what? I'm a realist. I'm, I, I'm rooting for myself to be wrong in this, but uh, I don't see it. I think they're a nine and 17. By the way, there was, if someone would make odds on us going under on our uh, favorite teams, it would be off the charts, right? I mean, we just have to, it's human nature. We'd have to, we'd have to both go under. I got to say, I, I do like this Patriots team, and I thought that they had one of the best drafts they've ever had last year. They got who look, somebody who looks like he's going to be like a 10-time All-Pro punter. They got linebackers. They, got, they totally shored up the tight end. They got a cornerback that, even though I think they blew the pick and they probably should have taken Kyle Wilson, I think McCourty at least is going to play. Um, but the problem is that the three drafts before that were stinkers, and if you if you blow drafts, it just comes back to haunt you down the road. So my fear with this team is they have too many guys that are slightly past their prime and too many guys that haven't hit their prime yet, and they have nobody in the middle. And that's where I think they're going to get killed. What do you think? No, I think it's the same thing. You lack the toughness in the middle like you've had in years past. But no pass rush. I say 9-7, and seven and I say they make the playoffs, but uh, not over not over 9.5, I don't think. Yeah. I, I will say, though, I think this is going to be a likable team because the one thing they haven't had the last couple of years is like a, a crew of young, energetic, likable, fun guys. It's just been a while, and I think the fans are going to really like this team. I just don't think they're going to be able to stop anybody. Well, uh, maybe you have some inside information. Are they? Are they? Uh, is Belichick stepping down? I mean, how are they going to be likable? Ah, oh. even right for the heart on that one. That really, oh, it's hurt. Oh, it's God. August. You can't come at me like that. <laughs> um, the Saints over ten and a half. No action either way. You know, this is one of my four uh, best. I think I'm, I'm going over. I think that's a garbage division. I really do. I think. Uh, if you look at those other three teams, the uh, the Falcons, the Panthers, and Tampa Bay, neither, neither none of them have a pass rush. The Saints, the Sean Payton's figured it out. He like blitzes more than any. Like they blitzed like 243 times last year or something. I read. They're good. They're they're a 12 or 13 win team. I, am, I know it's bandwagon because they won the Super Bowl, but yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go cautiously over. I, I always get nervous with teams the year after they win the Super Bowl because it just Odds are that everything went right the previous year, and then the year after you end up paying karmically a little bit. So I'm they just have go. games they're not going to lose. They're Tampa twice, Seattle, St. Louis, Cleveland. I think like half their schedule is. Uh, it yeah, looks too easy. Minus one seventy, minus one seventy five. Uh, well, we didn't get to divisions yet, but all right. It looks too easy. That's my fear. Just looks looks like a no brainer. Just lock them down for eleven or above. Yeah. Um, Giants, your least favorite team. Not not just in football, maybe in all sports, right? I think so. Yeah. Okay. They, like, I think I've seen them beat the Cowboys live more than I've seen any team beat any of my other favorite teams. <laughs> the, uh, the over-under for them is 8.5, and, and a lot of action on the over, minus 155. New stadium. They had a couple good drafts. Giants fans feeling, like, quietly confident, the ones that I know. Like, they're not they're – not, Pounding their chests about it, but they, you can just kind of see the quiet confidence in their eyes, which worries me. Um, I'm going to have to go over on this, despite how tough the division is. It feels like a nine and seven, ten and six team. What do you think? I, I think so too. I think the Giants and Eagles are, you know, they have eight or nine wins going into the last week. It, it's going to be bunched up, but um, 
I think the pass rush will be better for the Giants and uh, the running game. It, it, it depends if they're running. If Jacobs and Bradshaw stay healthy, but I'll go over there. Yeah, not quite a bet, but definitely. Yeah. Jets, the other New York team, over is uh, nine and a half. Slight action on that, minus one twenty-five. People have them. Um, I mean, seriously, have you seen a pick other than Baltimore versus the Jets for the AFC title game? Has anyone made that made a pick other than that yet? No, no, and I feel bad jumping jumping aboard, but um, I think if they sign Revis, they win the division and maybe the AFC. Uh, maybe I'm just moved by this hard knocks too much, but they look so solid on defense, so solid. You got to factor in though the uh, the hard knocks, the sentimental sway that you don't even realize is happening as you watch Hard Knocks and everybody that you see on Hard Knocks, you're like, oh, that guy's good. Whoa, that guy looks great. And you stop thinking about the team objectively. I'm going to go back to Mark Sanchez here, who, you know, I thought was very good in the playoffs and throws a nice deep ball, but the bottom line is last year, 12 touchdowns, 20 interceptions. Yeah, and, I was looking at that. I was surprised to see that. It was yeah. Like 21. Was it 21? Yeah. But they... Uh, and Jay Cutler... You know, takes a beating. Twenty. Jay Cutler had a better year last year than Mark Sanchez. He threw the ball a lot more. He had no no real running game because Forte disappeared. And Jay Cutler, oh, you, know, you can't win with this guy. Blah blah blah. And Sanchez, handsome, um, carries himself well in interviews, all that stuff. But man, he really regular season did not have a great year. And then you watch Hard Knocks, and he's not having a good preseason either. So that would be my concern. Well, I I think. Well, here's the, here's the X factor, I think. And we wrote him off last year. We thought it was done. But Tomlinson out of the backfield catching passes could be could be big. And I don't think Sanchez is going to be asked to do a lot to win these games anyway. I think defense is that good. Yeah. Uh, and so if he could swing it out to, you know, LT, plus, you know, he does have some decent receivers there. If Braylon Edwards and San Antonio Holmes could get their head straight. I don't think he'll be asked to do much. These are one of one of those teams where they could they could win seventeen ten every week. You know. So to be an Eli Manning steer the ship type thing. That's right. Well, New York quarterback. You brought up Tomlinson though. Why why should I think that he's anything other than washed up after what I watched last year? Um, I think like what I was reading something. And it kind of makes sense. Like it, even if he didn't produce crazy numbers. Teams have to account for him and looking at film and everything, and it, it might be too much for them to have to look at LT and Sean Green, like two, two mm. kind of explosive backs if they if they get their way back there, and uh, he he might be uh, without uh, you know lighting the world on fire numbers wise, he he might be just the decoy they need there. I think he's washed up. All right. I do like the over, and I agree with you. It would, it would be very 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 surprising. This team By the way, with hard yes. knocks, real quick. Week one, Rex Ryan drops, you know, a couple dozen f bombs. Week two, they bleep it, and then week three, they're back to good fellas. You know what happened? You no, saw no. you saw an earlier version. I think what they're doing is they're bleeping the earlier versions, and then as it goes right. later in the night, they don't bleep it. So the East Coast version gets the oh, they they bleep the early version or they don't. They bleep one of the versions. I think the version that goes up at 10 o'clock East Coast time, I think they, they do bleeps for that one. Oh, uh, I see. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. I think they should do like uh, TNT does with the movies and like overdub the swearing. <laughs> so Rex Ryan is like maybe yelling at uh, Sanchez, come on, get your monkey stuffing head in the game. <laughs> hey, uh, who swears more, Rex Ryan or Adam Carolla on his podcast? <laughs> wow. Is it Corolla? It's got to be Corolla, right? <laughs> he's just he's dropping f bombs left, and right, left, right. It's it's uh, I don't totally understand it. I, mean, I might have to have Very an f bomb intervention. Ah, I'd see, you know, some people might want to listen to that at work with a kid in a car seat. Kind <laughs> of count for those people. When you're discussing such hot topics as uh, which which mustard to put on a, a turkey sandwich, you can't help but to become so passionate that the Lose your mind with four letter words, right? I went over there the other day, and there was like twelve people that do that show now. <laughs> There's so many people that Donnie now doesn't doesn't uh, doesn't actually have a job. He like oversees the other engineers. That's great. It's it's quite a scene. You got to go over there and see it. 
I do want to head over there. Yeah, check it out. You should do it. All right, back to the podcast. Oakland. All right. Six and a half. And I'll tell you, I like the over. I do, too. Mm. I do, too. I, I think Jason Campbell's a good fit there. The, the, you know, we... We, I think we bet against the Raiders a, a bunch last year, and and it, and it bit us hard. But I, I think that's just what they need—a quarterback that doesn't screw up. Now it would help that they got him a receiver. They didn't—they didn't do. Well, I don't know why these teams just don't upgrade at receiver ever. Like he's throwing yeah. to Lewis Murphy now. But, but they uh, might have really good like receivers. Tim Brown could come out of retirement and do better. I think. <laughs> they might but, have good receivers though, and we just don't know because their quarterbacks have been so bad. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. I like them. I, I, I mean, they've been rebuilding for five years, and then they made the Seymour trade, which they basically mortgaged uh, this year's draft to get Seymour, and it does seem like they have some heavy hitters, and it's a terrible division. They it, And they play hard for Cable for whatever reason. So I, it's seven and nine is realistic to me. Here's another one I beating love. Up, uh, beating up his assistant coaches. I think, uh, I think they could focus on, on getting it done. He hasn't beaten up an assistant coach in two years. It's been a um, while, right? <laughs> Philly, another one of my favorites. Eight and a half. The odds are with you on this. It's it's plus one ten. To go if you over. Go over. And uh, I got to tell you, I think Cobb's going to be good. I really think. I don't think they miss a beat with him. I like him too. I think. Uh, and if I may give a fantasy uh, sleeper out there, I think you wait till the ninth or tenth round, and Kevin Cobb is is putting up uh, Peyton Manning type numbers. That's a bold statement right there, but. He is he even a sleeper at this point, though? Well, I think if you do these mock drafts, he goes he goes that late. So <laughs> Wait, you're not telling close. me you're doing mock drafts. Well, no, I'm. <laughs> I, you know, I, these kids on the block they tell me all about it. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. But uh, here's uh, the Indi- yeah, so they're they they're good. They're they're young. Sean Jackson McCoy. They have like a swagger to them. They, uh, I'm scared of that team. I go over. So they went eleven and five last year and nine six and one the year before. So they're twenty eleven and one the last two years. Yeah. And then they're solid. I'm afraid of that team. Since two thousand, they gone eleven wins, eleven, twelve, twelve, thirteen, six, ten, eight, nine, eleven. The only uh, thing is, they may have bought themselves a loss at Washington, <laughs> a game that they probably would have won anyway. Yeah. Um, with this uh, McNabb trade, but otherwise, I think they'll be all right. I think that's my favorite one. I, I'd be the shocked. Over. I just, I'd be shocked if they didn't win nine games. Yeah. All right. Only a couple more. I'll put more. that down too. I like that. I can't bet it though. God, I hate that team too. No, I right. like Pittsburgh now. Yeah, I know you can't bet it, but that won't stop me from betting it. Pittsburgh <laughs> is nine, and the over. I mean, uh, the action on it, pretty surprising. Plus one forty-five. It's huge. If you go, I wanted to go under, but I'm laying almost two to one, minus one seventy. That's that's hard. You want to, so you want to go under? I'll go over. I'm still going under. I don't think they fight back to nine wins. I'm going think, under with this team. I think that team still has a ton of talent, and I think last year was very explainable. They had injuries, Super Bowl hangover. Roethlisberger was obviously acting inappropriately behind the scenes. I think all that stuff straightened out. I don't know if that's true. What? (laughs) (laughs) Wow, this is probably the craziest over-under of them all. And uh, what's what do they make these in April and they can't change them? San Diego. Well, just in general, they make over-unders when in April, May. Yeah, they start after the draft. They come out, yeah. And then they can't move the number. They just move the action on the number. They don't actually move the number. Right, they don't move it. I mean, just the, the betting moves it, so. Right. So San Diego's over-under, which was obviously made months ago, is 11. So and that's the highest one, right, as I look now? I think in New oh, Orleans. Colts is 11 also. Yeah, Colts is 11, but man. You, if you're betting on this, you're betting that San Diego is going to go 12-4 and four or better. I don't see any way that happens. Well, it did help that Denver uh, kind of bowed out of the race with all their injuries, right? Yeah. And but even if they go 5-1 and one in the AFC West, that means they have to go 7-3 and three against everybody else to hit that over. They were 13-3 and three last year. Right. They got two guys holding out. They lost Tomlinson. Somebody else got hurt. Who got hurt? I think they have a pretty easy schedule. Um, yeah, they had offensive linemen get hurt. 
They I'm going under. Small Williams. Year four or north. I I just think it's it's a pretty easy division. I, I mean, how'd they get 13 wins last year? So you're going over. I'm going to go over. All right. I'll go over. Let's go against each other here. I think they have a pretty easy schedule, and uh, and this Ryan Matthews is going to explode. San Francisco, the biggest bandwagon team this year. Their over is eight and a half. Ton of action on the over, minus 170. So that means if you want to bet them to win nine wins or more, you got to lay 170 to win 100. Um, I got to say, I kind of like it. <laughs> you like the over? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't bet it, but um, not a good division. And I, I, I think, yeah. Uh, forget about expanding to 18 games. Let's just get rid of this division. This is such a garbage division. Sorry. I, wouldn't, I, I don't know. I wouldn't bet over eight in any team in this division. I wish we could go back to the days of three divisions in each conference. Yeah. I just feel like uh, like things made more. It's just too much of an advantage now if you're in a division with three stiffs. Yeah. And I, I figured it out. Seattle could go 6-10 and ten and win this division by two games. That would be so cool if a 6-10 and ten team won. Let's actually, <laughs> let's get to them. I'm going to say over, but I don't want to bet it. Seattle is 7. And uh, despite Pete being pumped and jacked, and uh, despite Charlie Whitehurst looking pretty good in the preseason, I just don't think they have any talent. So I'm going under. I don't like them either, but they finish uh, with a weak schedule, so I think they could. I think they can win eight games. Like the at Tampa and versus St. Louis are the last couple of games, and mm. I would go over. over, but I, w- I wouldn't go crazy with it. So do we disagree? Oh, what would you say, under? I said under. Oh, I think they win eight games. I think oh. it's easy to be. I think they, they, their home field advantage shows up, and uh, and they win eight games. All right. St. Louis, four and a half. <laughs> what did they win last year? You know what? I would have liked I would have liked this over because I do think their offense is going to be pretty good, and I do like Bradford. I think he's going to throw the ball. But that, Donnie Avery looks like he blew out his knee last night. That's not good. Yeah. That, I mean, those receivers are horrible. Yeah, Avery out. It's, it's yeah. Lawrence Robinson and Amendola and Jay it's Fieldy. A dis- I mean, it's a disaster. Jackson's going to miss four games probably. I mean, not, not that he's injured, but we know he's going to miss four games. I'm going under. I'm going under, too. This team won one game last year. You're betting over? You're betting that they're going to win five, four more games? No. They won Tamp- under. Tampa, their over is five and a half. A lot of action on the over, minus 140. Um, they were a little frisky last year, and in fact, I think they cost you like uh, some crazy parlay that you would have won, except I think Josh Freeman caught fire, or somebody did, and you've resented them ever since. It was week 15, They're up. the Saints are up at home 17-3 at halftime, and they lose, and that Garrett Hartley, who couldn't miss a field goal, a 70-yard field goal in the playoffs, blew like a 31-yarder with no time left, and then Tampa won in overtime. It was, they are a little gutsy. I, I, I think Tampa 2 represents uh, their win total this year, though. I go under. I go under as well. And, you know, you mentioned that Week 15 game. I, don't, I think it's impossible to fix a professional football game <laughs> in the National Football League. But if you're going to pick one game a year that you're yeah. like, man, that looked like that was fixed, that was the game. Yeah, I just don't know how they find out how, that I bet on it, and so they, they fix it. They just they figure it all out. Yeah, somehow somehow we never win those games. We always have the team that uh, that loses. All right, two more. They have three T- players over thirty years old. That has to be a record, right? And and not one of them is the coach. No. Um, <laughs> Tennessee is eight and a half plus one ten. I like it. I like Fisher. I like Young. I like Chris Johnson. Um, not a not a tough division except for the Colts, and it just feels like a nine and seven or ten and six to me. You know what? I'm I'm a loser, and I stared at this team for like an hour last night, and I can't figure them out. This is the only team in in the league that I really don't have any feel on. I, I think I could be off by five games how many they win. So it's eight and a half. Why don't you join me on a tentative over so we don't disagree? All right, let's do a tentative over. Washington. Tough schedule though. Tough schedule. Last one, Washington is seven and a half. Oh, and right. slight action on the over. Uh, that seems low. They do have talent, and the, and the the coach that they got this year is much better than the coach they had last year, and the quarterback they have this year is much better than the quarterback they had last year. Well, here's the thing: we signed off on the Eagles going over and the Giants going <laughs> over, so we think like ten and nine wins there. We mm. think the Cowboys will have nine. 
So can the Skins have eight then? It seems like those four teams will all be bunched between eight and ten wins. Yeah. I'm going to go over. All right, I'll go over, too. I think uh, I think Shanahan, the Shanahan factor wins them a game or two. All right, so here's what we disagreed on. Yeah. Atlanta, you had the over, I had the under. So, mm-hmm. and that was nine. Detroit, I had the over of five, you had the under. Houston, you have the over of eight, I have the under. Miami, I have the over eight and a half, you have the under. Pittsburgh, I have the over of nine, you have the under. San Diego, you have the over of 11, and I have the under. And then Seattle, you have the over of seven, I have the under. Which is nice because we have seven teams, so a little bragging rights for that. It's going to be good. When we all tie, when we tie on all of these, it's going to be great. And then let's narrow these down for the ones we liked. We liked uh, Cards minus 7.5 under. We like Bills minus 5.5 under. We like Cincy under 8. We like Cleveland under 5.5. We like Dallas under 10. Green Bay over 10. Casey minus 6.5 over. Mini under 9.5. Oakland over 6.5. Philly over 8.5. And, and Pittsburgh over 9. Let's want to narrow that down to Philly over 8.5 and, and Green Bay over 10. And cards under seven and a half. Yeah, I don't know. What do you think? I think the bills is easy money too. I mean, throw throw that on there. All right, let's throw the bills instead of the cards. We'll do those three. So we got bills minus five and a half under. Mm -hmm. Philly minus eight and a half over. Mm -hmm. Why are you saying minus? They're given. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, Eight and a half. And then Casey six and a half over. We don't like Oakland. Want to throw them in too? Well, you have to either take Casey or Oakland, right? You probably split on those if you go both over. Um, All right. What are the odds on that? Let's. So the odds would be minus one twenty and. Minus yeah, 120. you're right. That's a lot. That's a loss. I'm gonna go with Casey. All right. All right. Oakland has Al Davis. I don't know if you heard of him. All right. Oh, so yeah. there we go. That's we're done with the overrunners. I think the one we feel best about is Philly, right? I like Philly. I, I know it's uh, it's easy to say the Saints, but I think they win 11 games in that division and Buffalo under, I would say. Okay. We're going to split this into two parts. If you want to hear us break down the uh, NFL divisions and the odds for those, check part two of the BS Report. And also, we're going to call my buddy house and talk NBA with him. Part two, BS Report, coming up. Target the sound off. Whoa. Thank you for downloading the BS Report with Bill Simmons. Too much fun. Check out more podcasts at the iTunes Music Store or at PodCenter at ESPNRadio.com. Peace out.